hands yanked, and ripped the clothes off my body. I was unable to make any effort to stop them, and I couldn't make out their faces. Strip him completely, he's dead. It was Dr. Bashir's voice. But I'm not dead, I wanted to say. I, I, I couldn't form the words to voice them. I was absolutely helpless as they lifted my naked body and threw me into the deep pit on top of the other bodies. Ah, Elam, the body next to mine said. You too. It was Tain. Yes, sooner or later we all end up here, the body beneath me observed. It was Tolan. All the bodies in the pit were muttering. But we're alive! I protested above the babbling drone. What, what, what are we doing in here? Ah, this is the final stratagem, Ten Lubak. It was Calix. If you can master this one, you've found your place. But this is horrible. This can't be my place. How can I master this? I pleaded. This is your place. Lokar's voice informed me, and you must never forget it. Just tread lightly, Elam, use the silences. Pythus's voice advised me. I tried to move so I could see him, but I couldn't. Except, Elam, Mila told me, stop fighting who you are, and then you can move ahead. But, but why? Why are we here? And, and where's Palandine? Before anyone could answer, I fell hooked felt a load of rocks and soil fall on my body. That's the last one. Um, cover them up and seal off the pit. For the good of the quadrant, they must never be allowed to return. But why? I cried. Calix! How do I master this? My questions were answered by the falling soil and the murmuring babble. How? Tell me! How? I pushed my way away from the desk, bathed in sweat, gasping for breath. I stood up, looked around the room. Slowly, I came back to the station and the night silence. I had fallen asleep, working at the desk. I rubbed my head where it rested fitfully against the hard surface. This was probably my last night on the station, perhaps forever. I had so much work I wanted to complete. It was late, but I punched a code on the station comm. Uh, yes? Doctor, uh, forgive me, but I need to, to see you. Garrick? I, I, I do apologize, but it's... What, 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 what's wrong? It, it's, a, it's not a medical emergency. I, I, please, I realize this is an imposition. There was a silence. And I heard another voice, Esri Dax. A muffled conversation. The doctor cleared his throat again. Um, look, uh, I'll be right over. Ah, oh, thank you, doctor. I turned to the window and the eternal night of space. My beloved stars. Only a nightmare as terrible as this could make me so grateful to be alive on this station. How ironic that I would be leaving it in a few hours. It's, um, you know, the anxiety of going back to Cardassia. And it's a very dangerous mission. Um, does one ever become inured to the possibility of death? Oh, not really. I serve the Tarkalian tea. If we lose our fear of death, we lose an important ally. Perhaps you should talk to Esri about this. I mean, I don't know how much help I can be. Esri, with all due respect, wasn't in the dream. Well, neither was I. Oh, on the contrary, my friend, you were. He gave me his puzzled look, which wrinkled his brow. I was always amazed at how deep the furrows were for one so young. I trust you don't mean that literally. You were in my dream. Garrett. I can't believe. I mean, <laughs> look here. Um, my persona, my 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 symbolic representation, you know, was in your dream to serve a purpose devised by your subconscious mind to satisfy some need. It had nothing to do with me other than how your psyche used me, the way a, a, a playwright uses a character. I mean, 
this area has always been a great mystery. If I had a dream about uh, Hippocrates, you can't believe that this ancient Greek healer actually showed up. We exist on many levels at the same time. The, 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 this level, the, the space-time continuum, I believe you call it, is perhaps the narrowest and least dimensional of all of them, but it's the one in which we choose to relate to each other as corporeal beings in a defined material space measured by, by time. It serves a purpose, yes, but it's a purpose that's been determined by our interaction on other levels, deeper, more complex than this one. What's the purpose of this one, then? to consummate the agenda created by our more dimensional selves. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Who's that? Shakespeare. Ah, oh, yes, yes. I nodded in agreement. <laughs> Surprised that for once the author of the politically misguided and naive Julius Caesar made sense. I never heard you talk like this before. I had no idea Cardassians held such ideas. Now most don't. Oh, so, you're, did. so you're saying what? That this level is the concrete manifestation uh, of... Of who we are, Doctor. Our being, our human being, Cardassian being. But we... but. But we have become these beings, are becoming, always in the process of becoming on these other dimensional levels that are not limited by the measures of time and space. And the great determining factor of our becoming is relationship. Unrelated, I become unrelated, alienated, opposed, I become an antagonist. Unified, I become integrated, a functioning member of the whole. You're a scientist, Doctor. You have a deep understanding of this level. I don't mean just the mechanics. You understand about relationship, the laws that attract and repel, the combinations that nurture and poison, health and disease, integrity and breakdown. In your dream, I presided over the burial of yourself and the people you were most intimately related to. Why? You said, for the good of the quadrant. They must never be allowed to return. Well, why would you say that? I can only think that, um, look, I'm sorry, Garrick, this isn't easy for me. I, I still can't help thinking that this was your dream. Even if I was invited, you were the playwright. <laughs> yes, okay, then put yourself in that part. Why would you bury these people and cover up the pit? Oh, please, please, indulge me. It's vital that I have your answer. Well, if you and others were carriers of some disease, I mean, in our 14th century, back on Earth, there was a terrible plague, the Black Plague, which wiped out half of Europe's population. People believed that the dead bodies had to be destroyed, burned, buried, because it was the only way to prevent the spread of the disease. The calm sounded... Garrick, it was Kira. Y yes, Commander. Can you be ready to leave at, oh, 700 hours? I sighed. It was less than an hour, I, but I had no choice. Certainly. See you in airlock 11. Pack lightly. Just my hygiene kit and a change of undergarments. We clicked off. <laughs> well, tell me, Doctor... Is it the Black Plague, or just the ramblings of an old spy on the eve of battle? You are an amazing man, Garrick. And my gratitude to you can never be adequately expressed, I, but I shall try. Please, what have I done? Well, at <laughs> that time, you extended yourself so generously and, and found a way to remove that wire from my brain without killing me. I would have done that for anyone. I'm sure that's true. But that's not what I mean. All during the time the device was deteriorating, I was convinced I was going to die. 
you were resigned to it. I was also convinced that it was all a dream, and I kept asking myself, what were you doing there? But what you just told me that our dreams are just another way we relate. At that time, I had forgotten. That point of my life was perhaps the lowest. I had forgotten many things. When I woke up and realized that because of you, I was going to live, at that moment, I began to recollect some valuable information. About dreams? Yes, but specifically about relationships and and how they set the course of our lives. You not only saved my life, you also made it possible for me to live it. Hmm. What is it, Doctor? The time I wounded you in that Hollisweet program. Yes. I never never apologized for my actions. <laughs> you must never apologize. No, no, please, Garrett. This is not the time to give me a lesson on how to behave like a hardened spy. No, 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 no. On the contrary. When you shot me, my dear friend, that was the next step in my process of remembering. I was going to sacrifice the others, the people you considered your friends, because that was the only way I could be sure to save myself. You opposed me. Indeed, you would have killed me if necessary. I'm sure it would never have gotten to that point. You would have killed me for the greater good. The cliché suddenly had another meaning for both of us. This is my last trip to Cardassia. I'm not returning. You are in the dream for a very specific reason. Once again, you helped me remember. Thank you, Julian. You're welcome. And by the way, it wasn't the dead bodies that carried the disease. It was later determined that it was the rats feeding on the bodies who were the transmitters. Then I guess we'll go to Cardassia and look for the rats. Be careful, Garrick. And look after my hot-headed friend, will you? Oh, don't worry, we'll look after each other. Did you really have a dream about Hippocrates? <laughs> yes. Actually, I did. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> Kira was waiting in front of the airlock when I turned the corner. Odio's on his way. How are you feeling, she asked. I've never been better. Commander, I replied with fervor. Kira gave me a long look. I don't think I've ever seen you so enthusiastic, Garrick. I've finally remembered why I'm here. <laughs>